16.2. You need to be on at least DaVinci Resolve 16.2 in order to use these transitions. What up folks, it's Alex here. Now, a lot of you have been asking for it, so here it is, finally. I've updated my original Seamless Transitions pack to work with DaVinci Resolve 16.2. That means all of these transitions will work on any resolution and any frame rate, and they're completely scalable. You can make them as long and as short as you like. Now, I've not just updated the original transitions, I've also added in some additional ones as well. So there's about 50 transitions in this pack for you now. Obviously, that takes a lot of work. So if you do enjoy them, you do make use of them, please do consider supporting me and the channel by buying me a coffee on my Buy Me A Coffee page linked down below. Right, enough of that, let's take a look at them, shall we? So that's it. There they are. The link to download is down in the description below, so you can download them now for free. But as I say, please do consider supporting me and the channel. Now, let me just show you really quickly how to install them. Make sure that you've closed DaVinci Resolve. It needs to be closed before you actually perform this process. Now, once you've downloaded the file, you should end up with something like this, Mr. Alex Tech Seamless.zip. The first thing you need to do is just to extract this file. If you're on Windows, simply right click, extract, and extract when prompted. And you'll end up with a file like this, Mr. Alex Tech Seamless. If you double click to open it up, and within there you'll see a bunch of these setting files. These are the transitions themselves, and they just need to be moved to a specific location. There's also an install locations.txt file. If you open that up, it's got the folder locations where you need to move all of these files to. So I'm just gonna copy them all, Go to that location, because I'm on Windows, which is here, and you should see a bunch of pre-existing .settings files. All we need to do is paste the files into there, like so. Once that's done, you can close that folder, close your text file, you can actually delete the original .zip, because that's all done with, close it down, you're good to go. And then you can open DaVinci Resolve. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and remember these transitions will work on any resolution and any frame rate, but obviously the higher the resolution and frame rate, the longer they'll take to render. So to use them, first of all, open up your effects library, come down here to the toolbox, and then video transitions, and then scroll down until you get to the fusion transitions folder. They will be within there, and you'll see them as Mr. AT, and then a brief description. To use them, simply click, drag, and pop them onto any cut on your timeline. Now to make sure they play smoothly, make sure that you click on playback, render cache, and set that to smart. When that's set to smart, you will see this bar appear above the transition. When it's caching, when it's trying to render th the transition, that will be red, and when it's finished, it will be blue, and then you should be able to play back with no issues at all. Now you've got lots and lots of options in here. This is a simple film roll. You've got down, left, right, and up. We've also got a bunch of different spins. So down here, we've got regular spins. These are 360 degrees, while the mega spin is 1080, 1080 degrees. Now you'll also notice these have got lots of abbreviations. Clock simply means it goes in a clockwise direction, whereas anti is anti-clockwise. And then all of these letters on the end, that means bottom center, bottom left, bottom right, top center, top left, top right, etc. We've also got some standard whips in a bunch of different directions. And finally, we've got some zooms and as well. Now, generally about one second will work well for the length of these transitions. The standard whips, you'll want them to be a little bit quicker because they're quite short and punchy, but you can just play with these. You can lengthen them, you can shorten them however you want to, and they will just continue. They will adapt seamlessly and work at whatever length you want them to. If you ever try and put a transition onto a cut and this happens, you can only put it on one side, not the actual cut itself. It's simply because these transitions need a little bit of excess over here in order to work. So this is actually the very beginning of this clip. If we were just to trim it a little bit and then move it over, we would then be able to drop that transition onto the cut like so. And that's it, easy as that. I hope you love these transitions as much as I do. If you do, thumbs up, any comments or feedback down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. 
Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take it easy. Bye.